The Internet of Things, the promise of taking small embedded computers, placing them everywhere, and connecting them. We are told not to worry about security because the unbreakable algorithms approved by the US government are in use. All is not well though, a line of attacks called power analysis, which have been known for about 15 years, means we can break even these perfect implementations. Here I'm breaking an AES-256 bootloader in a few minutes using these techniques. The core problem is one of education and access to tools. The few commercial tools are too expensive for small shops, think luxury car costs, and attempts at open source solutions have been generally limited to academic research. So, my solution to this problem is a combination of open source hardware and software I call Chip Whisperer. This aims to be a complete toolchain for side channel power analysis and glitching attacks. The hardware I'm showing here is my commercial version, but the designs for everything from this capture hardware to the probes is all open source. The system uses an FPGA based capture box, including a high speed ADC with variable gain low noise amplifier, a high speed USB interface, and it is capable of performing feats not possible with other pieces of low cost equipment. For example, triggering on an analog pattern in the power consumption so you can determine exactly when a sensitive operation is occurring monitoring EM emissions on a cycle-by-cycle -cycle basis, or generating glitches with something like 100 picosecond resolution. So, yes, the software is open for this, the FPGA design is open, and the PCB layout is open. But that's not all. Documentation is equally important. I've got detailed build instructions, bill of materials you can copy and paste right into DigiKey, and a huge amount of documentation with detailed tutorials about everything from how you install the software to running example attacks and even how the theory of the attacks themselves works. And you can even use a regular oscilloscope with this software or just download some of the existing traces and run through these tutorials yourself. You don't need the hardware to start learning and you can in fact decide to build it later once you need the advanced features. So, from an engineering perspective, what's involved? We have two sides. We have the hardware side and the software side. The hardware side is all these FPGA blocks, and you can actually disable them to fit in smaller FPGAs, such as the Spartan 6 LX9 on that $90 development board I just showed. The software side is also very modular. The capture program is different from the analysis program. Part of the reason is to allow interactions to cloud-based computing. So here I'm showing saving traces to remote database. This is the Amazon remote database, um, which then lets you rent a supercomputer for doing extremely advanced attacks. This helps level the playing field for independent researchers. This is the main capture window written in Python, and I'm running an example script to connect to an AES implementation in an AVR. I can then modify settings, such as the gain on the low noise amplifier, the sample length on each trigger, along with trigger events, including the advanced uh, detection of analog patterns. You can even do stuff like drive a specific clock frequency to the device under test. The Chip Whisperer is designed for synchronous capture, meaning the sample points are taken relative to the device under test, which allows it to outperform classic oscilloscope-based setups at a fraction of the cost and sample rate. The use of synchronous sampling is one of the major breakthroughs in this project. So, it also has this glitching window, which allows me to vary parameters of the glitch, and record results, such as was the glitch successful or did the device just reset. This can be used to generate maps of vulnerable glitch parameters. Glitching can cause devices to operate incorrectly. Here I'm bypassing a password check on an AVR, but I can even do this on something like an Android smartphone, where I'm causing an incorrect calculation result to occur in a user land program. So back to our power analysis. I can run a command to take the power measurements associated with each encryption or decryption operation, save traces to disk, and open them in the analyzer software. This software provides a variety of pre-processing modules such as filters or normalization. All these button clicks in the GUI are really just writing a Python file, so we could instead modify this Python file directly. Running the attack causes the Python file to be dynamically loaded as a module, meaning you aren't restricted to only what you can modify through some dumb GUI. You can code advanced attacks directly in this file, you can load NumPy modules, or you can load other modules you've written. So, let's show you an example of this and start the attack. You can see even on my laptop computer here, we're very quickly getting results. For advanced analysis, again, you may need to take advantage of the database function to offload to cluster computers. So you can see here, I've actually already recovered the encryption key in a few seconds. What we can do after running the attack is plot results over time to determine where sensitive operations are leaking. Here I can say successive bytes leak as I move forward in time, suggesting a simple loop. My hope is Chip Whisper becomes part of dismantling the secure because math mindset of many embedded engineers. Then we can truly begin to understand the security of the systems we are designing.